Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Gretchen Hawley, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. I want to talk about heat intolerance right now because there's a lot of confusion around what heat intolerance is and not only that, but what we can do about it. So let's dive in. A few years ago, I had a client named Pam who has multiple sclerosis, and she came into the physical therapy clinic to see me, and she was saying how worse her symptoms had felt, specifically her spasticity and her fatigue. She was explaining to me how they've been worsening over the last few days and that she really felt like her MS was progressing, that she was transitioning from relapsing remitting MS to secondary progressive MS. And after digging around a bit and asking her some questions, we quickly realized that her MS was not progressing at all, even though it felt like it. But what was actually happening is she was experiencing heat intolerance. And this was a shock to her because she's had MS for 12 years and she's never had heat intolerance or cold intolerance for that matter. She's never been affected by heat, so this was brand new to her, and she just had assumed that since she hadn't been affected by heat in the past, she wouldn't be affected by heat now. And unfortunately, that's not true. Heat intolerance can kick in at any time, even if it didn't affect you before this time. So I started explaining to her what heat intolerance was and tips that she can do to manage it. And that's what I want to share with you today. Heat intolerance is anything in the world that increases your core temperature. A lot of people think that it's just the temperature outside. And yes, the temperature outside can absolutely increase your core temperature for sure. But that's not the only thing. To give you a few other ideas, stress, our physical and emotional and mental stress can increase our core temperature, causing worsened symptoms. Or... Exercise. We know exercise is good for us, but it can increase our core temperature. And when that happens, it can make any of your symptoms worsen. Or it could be a hot shower or even a warm shower or any form of movement. There's so many things that can increase our core temperature. So we need to be aware of those because if you're noticing worsened symptoms, the first thing you should ask yourself is, is there something happening right now, anything at all that could potentially be increasing my core temperature? And if the answer is yes, that is what we focus on fixing. And the good news is that usually it's a quick fix. Heat intolerance is one of my favorite symptoms of MS because it usually does have a quick fix. So we'll get to those quick fixes in a second. But before we do, I just want to bring something else to your awareness. So often, I would say about 50% of my clients with MS who have heat intolerance will often say to me in the summertime that their symptoms are worse. Maybe it's their fatigue or their weakness or sensation or vision. Any of their symptoms are worse, even though they are sitting inside in air conditioning. And I can understand why this is a confusing piece of information because you would assume that if you're inside in air conditioning and your skin is cool, that you're actually preparing yourself to avoid or reduce heat intolerance. However, the barometric pressure outside, especially if it's humid, but even if it's not, can still increase our core temperature, even if you're inside in air conditioning. So. If it is warm where you are right now, even though you're indoors and cool, calm, and collected, it still can increase your core temperature, which is why you want to be aware of the temperature outside, but also aware of your other triggers like stress or exercise, movement, showers, anything of that sort, and implement these tips that I'm about to share with you proactively. Ideally, you would do them before the symptom actually worsens. But if you miss that, it's okay to implement it while you're feeling your symptoms worsen. So there's two main strategies that are really quick fixes that I like to implement. The first one, and this will always be my favorite, is to sip ice cold water. Ice cold water is ingested into our body, which can immediately cool our core temperature down. And what you might be thinking is, 
I have incontinence or I have bowel or bladder symptoms, I can't drink water. And there's a lot of conversation that we could have around this to not get too far off topic. I just wanna share with you that you can have tiny sips of ice cold water. It doesn't need to be a big full eight ounce glass of water. Just tiny sips can be enough. In addition to that, it doesn't need to be ice cold. If you're someone who cannot tolerate ice cold water, just cold water, just something that feels refreshing. Or if you can tolerate cold temperatures of cold water, maybe even putting an ice cube, a small ice cube in your mouth and just sucking on that for a bit to cool your core temperature down. So again, if we're thinking about this proactively, if you know that exercise is something that increases your core temperature, then maybe about 10 or 15 minutes before you exercise, you're sipping some ice cold water. And then during your exercise, during every rest break, you're sipping ice cold water. And then after you exercise, you're continuing to sip ice cold water. Or maybe you suck on a small ice cube before and then during, not when you're exercising, you don't want any choking hazards, but while you're resting and then also after. So before, during, and after is when you'd implement that. My second favorite technique is to wear cooling products. Now, there are so many cooling products out there. There are neck wraps, there are uh, vests that you can wear, there's hats, there's clothing, there's t-shirts that will wick away your sweat to keep you cool. There's wristbands, those are some of my favorite. There's even a watch that you can wear that keeps you cool. There's lots of different products out there. It doesn't matter which one you do, which one you use or implement. I used, had a client a few years ago named Susan who loved these necklaces. It was a fabric necklace that looked like balls of yarn or balls of fabric. And so there were these balls throughout the entire necklace, but you wet the necklace, put it in the freezer, and then take it out and wear it. And it looks like a fun decorative necklace, but it kept her cold. So it doesn't matter what it is, but be proactive about your cooling products that you use. And this is really important, what I'm about to say next, which is pick a cooling product that you actually will wear. So often, I have clients who will get this really expensive, really big and bulky uh, cooling vest, but it's so big and bulky that it adds weight to them, especially when the ice packs are in there and it's harder to move around. And so they just never wear it. They forget that they even own it. The best cooling product for you is the one that you will actually use and wear and utilize. So I won't mention any brands here. If you have questions about brands, just feel free to send me an email or an Instagram message. I'm dr.gretchen or YouTube. I'm all over social media, but there are lots of lightweight cooling products that you can utilize. And again, you'd want to implement that before, during, and after. You can even use this during the holiday season. If you're the type of person I know I am, where I get stressed with deciding, okay, what plans are we gonna do? Do I have to make any food? Where am I gonna be going? Do I have to pack things? That, cause, that can cause heat intolerance. So before you start thinking about, okay, what do I need to do for Thanksgiving? What do I need to do for, for Christmas, for the 4th of July, for whatever holiday is happening next? Think, before you think about those things and before you start planning, put an ice cold vest on or sip ice cold water and then keep it on as you're doing it. Or if you're exercising, put on a cooling vest or a cooling neck wrap, cooling wristbands before you exercise, keep them on during and then keep them on after. So those are my two favorite cooling techniques, but there are a lot out there. You could take a cold shower, you could do stress reduction, especially if stress is what is causing your heat intolerance. A meditation it might be exactly what you need to reduce your core temperature. But the reason those two are my favorite, the sipping ice cold water and wearing a cooling product is because it's such a quick fix. And so when you implement those, you can often notice a reduction or even complete um, loss of the symptom that you are feeling 
within anywhere from five to 30 minutes. It's usually pretty quick. So I hope you implement those. I hope that if you are experiencing heat intolerance this season, you're able to manage it and it doesn't affect you as much. If you'd like to know more information about this, consider checking out my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link, or any of my content on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Thank you.